And we got the recording going here, and we're waiting to get online. We got a, we're online now. Okay, there we go. Well, we're uh, we're back again with another one of our uh, little gatherings on a. Uh, let's see here. This is Monday, and uh, uh, we get a lot of people. I'll explain this in a little while. We get a lot of people uh, watching this. This is our most pop on GabNet. It's the most popular show we have by a mile. By a mile. So, you know, uh, uh, let's see if we get all the people joining us today that normally join us. Marjorie will be joining us, but she has physical problems. So you may hear her yell and scream, ouch, a couple of times while we're going. Uh, I don't see Shecky on here yet. Gee, he usually is uh, is waiting. But uh, let's uh, admit the people who are here, are just a handful to begin with. And let's see, um, we're, I'm sure we're going out there, right? Let me just check, make sure we're going out okay. Da, 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 da. Here we go. Are we going out okay? Uh, I'm sure we are, all right? Okay, there we go. Oh yeah, we're, we're uh, okay. Hello to everybody, how are you? Uh, Good, yeah. uh, This is uh, Edward Burgers here and uh, Alex Bennett is here. And uh, Charlie Wallace is here, and uh, Len LaFrisco. Hello, Len. How are you? Great, sir. How are you? Fine. Fine. Good. Good. And this is our little Monday get together. Here comes Steve Bender. Let's admit him. And Jeff Stein is uh, is uh, coming here. Uh, let's uh, admit him. Uh, I wonder what happened to Shecky today. Huh. Yeah. So I... I I talked to him the other day, like Saturday. He says, I'll see you on Monday. So, okay. Let's wait and see what happens. Hello, everybody. Oh, we have a nice Florida background with Jeff Stein. <laughs> yeah, make us all feel horrible here in New York, where the current temperature is, oh, it's 37 degrees, Steve Bender. We're having a heat wave. It is wow. a heat wave. A heat wave. Yeah. 63 here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 39 in Austin. 39 in Austin. Uh, let me see. Wow. Get rid of this here. You guys are really getting cold down there. What? Down in Texas, they're getting a lot of cold weather. Oh, no, it's 59. Well, the other night, we have another show with, with Jack Bishop, and he does his show uh, up north Texas, and they had an ice storm, and he, he couldn't do his program. He got all, you know, I guess he, he, he got these... Uh, uh, what do you call it? solar panels? All right, solar panels, and uh, uh, all of a sudden his lights were starting to go out. Mm. And I'm going, well, that was a good idea. Solar panels, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, well, here comes Marjorie. Yeah, I'm still waiting for Shecky. I wonder what happened with Shecky. Uh, let's see here. And Candace, uh, hello, C C Candace. I believe has Candace called this program before? I be, I believe she has. Let's see here. Oh well, this isn't Candace. Oh, uh, our good friend up in Canada. Hi, Candace. Hi, Candace. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it was nice to see you, Candace. Uh, <laughs> um, let me see here. So, uh, where were we? Oh, so. Um, what was I talking about? No, I the show exactly. and <laughs> oh, here comes Rick. Ice storm. Yeah, here comes Rick. Here, comes you know what Jack's deal with the Texas uh, energy thing is that oh, if they run into problems, they can draw on his battery supply from his solar, and that's yeah. what was causing him problems. Okay. Here comes Brad Johnson. We've never seen Brad before, so let's. I'm always wary when I see a name that I haven't seen before. Are you Brad? Can you still connecting? It says, Does it, Brad, there you go. Hello, Brad. <laughs> if we don't get Brad soon, I'm getting rid of Brad. Uh, oh, he's, he's typing you, so he typed he's typing. hello. Yeah, but Brad, you, you can't, this isn't a show where you type in what you have to say. 
it isn't that kind of show. Well, let me see. Are you? Nah, yeah, I'm going to get rid of them. Uh, I don't want to have to put up with this. Uh, sorry, Brad. Oh, wait a minute. Brad, sorry. Uh, uh, I uh, got to find a mic button. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, Brad, go find your mic button. But and then, your video button. That would be nice, too. Uh, Brad. Oh, that wasn't the blue well, screen he's muted, background. So. He's muted. I know. But he doesn't know how to unmute. This is really compelling viewing, I got to say. <laughs> it really is. Right, I should actually put a gun. Must be Monday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm Brad here. No wonder this is the highest rated show. Oh, ask, him to, <laughs> uh, ask him to unmute. Oh, yeah. Well, I find the more technical problems I have, the higher the numbers go. Uh, <laughs> you know. oh, my camera's broken. Wait. Oh, no. Wait. What do I do? I just... <laughs> Brad, let's not take all day with this. Okay, remove. Yes, remove Brad Johnson. Goodbye, Brad. Later, uh, Brad. Uh, don't report. Okay, because I don't think oh, we Brad. hardly knew him. Hardly huh? knew him. <laughs> Brad, hardly knew ye. I, um, uh, what's her name? Marjorie. Uh, 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 Mar no, not Mark. <laughs> um, our other Mandy. Uh, Mandy. Mandy. Yeah, there you uh, go. Uh, and she said that she's just been the last couple of weeks, so she hasn't been able to call. So let's hope we see her today. It might be nice. Yeah, yeah, when I texted her, she said she was going to try and make it this week. So Yeah, yeah, I kind of miss her. But anyway, listen, I'll tell you what's happening with this show. So I, I, if, if, I don't know if you, when I go online, I get numbers of how many people are watch, have watched the video mm -hmm. when I post it on YouTube. And uh, uh, this week, we're up to almost uh, on YouTube to 500 and putting it together with all the other things, up to 900 people. Wow. <laughs> okay. But with YouTube. So it says five, four, 495, okay, or 485. And the next time I go back, it says 380. And the next time I went back, it said 320. And the next time I went back, it said 485. How old is this audience? Are they dying? I, I don't know. No, but I don't know what's going on at YouTube. I mean, they can't seem to figure out how many people have watched the video. Sounds to me like big tech is trying to censor Alex Bennett. <laughs> yeah. I don't Yes, you told me. Well, who don't want their music played on Spotify because Joe Rogan used the, as they quoted, N word. Yeah. And they have now done 70 programs he did. Is it? Alex, your video, your voice. You're yeah, you're, you're, okay. You're, your voice is cutting out. out. Your voice I thought it was me. Out. My voice uh, cutting out? It was me too. Yeah, your voice. Your yeah, voice you're the only one. Let me turn something down here. I I'm thought it was me. Yeah. Yeah. I did too. <laughs> so did what? I. <laughs> what? We all, we all thought, thought it was us. We all yeah. thought it was individually, not that. The... And no one's heard anything you've said so far. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's much better. See? Alex? Uh, Alex, yeah. yes, you told me. Oh, no, don't start. Don't start here with that. You started it. She doesn't like the fact that I call her on telling me something she already told me. Mm -hmm. So when I say something to her, anything, she says, you already told me. <laughs> it's her latest thing. How's mm -hmm. your back doing? I'm in pain. She's in great pain. Bad pain, I hope. No, I'll tell you the ibuprofen <laughs> helps. Oh, I see. Okay. Anyway. Am I, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What? Yeah, there's what? a little problem with this. If I turn something up too high, it cancels out my voice. I know that the audience could hear me. I'm sure of that. But, mm. but nothing anyway. like a nine minute intro for the 300 and some <laughs> odd people who like listening to this. 
<laughs> I, I want to hear from Chisholm because he's the defender of Joe Rogan. And um, we we had a, some, you know, we had discussion about it when he was giving the, what I thought was misinformation. Yeah. And now I, I canceled my Spotify, um, not only because of him, but reading about how little they pay artists and shit. And you know, I just went what to a was better, it, what was better it, company. What was it? Um, um, I was on an interview with David Crosby. Yeah, he's, on, he hates uh, On the MSNBC, he hates it. And uh, the interviewer said, well, how much money did you make last year on Spotify? And he said, with all the music of mine they play? <clears throat> yeah. He said, if we're lucky, I could take you out for a cup of coffee. Wow. wow. Spotify pays two cents per thousand streams. Oh, and, wow. and, most, and, and most of that goes to the uh, record company. Well, usually, wow. usually royalties of that sort go not to the record company, but to the to the publisher and to the writers of the song. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, there have never been, they call them performance royalties, but correct me if I'm wrong, Shecky, they're not really performance royalties because they don't pay the performers. They pay the writers and the publishers. Title, title. It pays sounds for- right, but I actually don't know. Yeah, Tidal, which is owned by Jay-Z and Beyonce, they pay directly to artists and they pay about seven cents per thousand streams. So in other words, as a publisher, they decided that they would also go to the performer yeah. as well. Yeah, do direct And that's right, because Jay-Z has a wife and his wife is Beyonce and Beyonce is a performer. So, so, he, so, so is Jay-Z, yeah. <laughs> well, they're artists. But then so how does Joe Rogan get a hundred million dollars a year? Right. They can't afford to pay a musician penny, but they can pay Joe Rogan a hundred million. I don't think they're paying him a hundred million a year. I think it was a hundred million dollars for the deal. deal, which was like two or three yeah. years. If I'm not oh, mistaken. So it's still thirty million dollars a look, year. Look, yeah. you know, all our shows from Gabnet are on Spotify. You can listen to this show on Spotify. Yeah. My show's on Spotify too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, but they're, they're not paying me anything for it. No, our, make- our, our business model is not, it's to get ears on the product. It's not to get money in our pockets for that. That, that comes in other places. Yeah, but on the other hand, YouTube does pay me money. Believe it or not, for those little commercials they run beforehand. Mm. And uh, I think I maybe made $300 last year. You know, not, not terrific, but if I had more than, 800 people listening i would probably you know if i had those great numbers like the girl who's doing her makeup tips <laughs> she's probably making several thousand maybe hundreds of thousands they make a lot of money they make yeah. a lot of money how much so. would it cost you to buy lipstick <laughs> <laughs> who said that jeff yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah well here's my makeup tip don't grow old. Uh, there's my makeup tip. Marjorie, you could do makeup tips for seniors, maybe. Right, right. Like, I stopped wearing makeup. You stopped. Well, you did. You don't wear. I don't remember. I don't see you putting on lipstick when we're going out or anything. I don't put lipstick, but I always had eyes done. You had, you my- always had <laughs> your eyes done? Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're always doing your eyes with the thing. Yeah, but I haven't since COVID. Yeah, and you're looking fine. Mm. You know, like another I've, thing. I've you're a you're a hot me. mama. <laughs> <laughs> hot grandma. No, you're not a grandmother. Uh, well, I'm yes, at that yes, age. Yes, Jeff. I have a question for Marjorie. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. Have, have you ever taken this medication called Voltaren? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I have it right here. <laughs> okay, is it? It's not working for you. No, um, yeah. I've been taking it for years when it was a prescription. Now you can yeah. get it over the counter, and right. it's the same trend. You rub it on whatever area it is. It's very, very good. Right. But I'm actually of the belief that Marjorie stole my Voltaren. No, it was my own. <laughs> here, 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 here it is. Here it is. Uh, uh, that's date, date night in the Bennett household when they switch medications. It's yeah. great. <laughs> now, what, what does it do? It's well, good for like muscles, um, right. for any kind of pain in a muscle or ligament. Yeah. And it does yeah. help. I'm using this it now. To, yeah. This used to cost, uh, I used to have to pay. I don't think I was, this, was this covered by my insurance? I don't think so. 
I buy it because I got it. Who? I buy it at Costco. You buy it, but now you buy it at Costco. Now it's over the right. counter. Yeah. Yes. But it's like about thirty bucks over the counter. It is expensive. Yeah, and I think you when you like got what? it, when you got it, and it was covered by insurance, it was a lot less. Yeah. But they go generic. They go over the counter. They go over the counter. Insurance doesn't cover you. Oh. Yeah. Have you tried CBD stuff? I know people who swear by it. I've never even tried it. Uh, uh, well, it, it's made from marijuana, isn't it? From hemp. It's made from yeah, cannabinoids. Yeah. Yeah. Can you can you also sip well, it this too? Helps. As long this as you helps. have it in a... right, That definitely helps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Oh, a joint. Yes. Can, does smoking pot help your back? Absolutely. Really? Is that your excuse? Yeah. No. <laughs> Can you buy? I had my surgery in two thousand nine. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But anyway, and I, Alex mm -hmm. didn't pick me up at the hospital and take me home. He okay. made me take a taxi. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> I got to tell you something about her. Uh, this is her constant complaint. This is what she goes to. This is in her. Well, you know how we have spank banks. This is the her her getting even with me spank bank. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, uh, she thinks I didn't pick her up from the hospital when in fact. It was practical not to. Because... You didn't want to get into a taxi and come all the way up and pick me up. Yeah, it practical was taking longer to get you home. It doesn't oh, here, matter. I... I just had major Excuse me, spine folks. surgery. Excuse me, folks. Now it's a family argument on the air for everybody. <laughs> to... It's just a fact. How many years Best has this thing been? To listen to. This was yeah, like... I'll increase the numbers. This was at least... <laughs> 12 years ago, something like that. <laughs> anyway, she can't remember what she saw on television yesterday, but she can remember that. Yeah. You know, I, I, uh, she's, she's, I have memory issues, she always says to me. I have memory issues. Yeah, well, you know the time at the hospital? Yeah, you didn't pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> it was all practical. Because the, by the time I got up there, you could have come home. Well, they don't let you out of the hospital. They made me sit in a wheelchair till I called a Har New Harlem car service, where they came and then the guy came out and helped me get into the cab. Well, today there's uh, there's Lyft. You can just call Lyft immediately. Yes, Alex. Uh, mm -hmm. Mandy is trying to get in. She would like you to let her in. What? Oh, Ma Ma Mandy. She's not, she's not trying because I don't see her here. Oh, there she is, the very top. Oh, okay. Uh, she, yeah. There's a list here, and I had the thing out of. Hey, <laughs> Yay. Hey, I'm, Mandy. I'm How long were you waiting, Mandy? <laughs> uh, maybe five to seven minutes. <laughs> really? Because I, you see, I have a list here, and uh, it, it, it goes down so many. And then uh, there wasn't anything. I didn't see. I I had to move it to the top, and then I. Yeah, it, I mean, I didn't jump on right away. Like I didn't get on right at four o'clock. So yeah. that's why I was like, maybe you just don't look at it after a certain time. Well, no, I look at it, but it was it was above a certain level that I didn't. <laughs> it was. It's too much. I just get so but I, I apologize so wholeheartedly so for what we did. <laughs> we <laughs> now wait. There's no we here. No, oh, no. excuse me. These guys had nothing to do with. It. <laughs> Mandy, all you missed was Alex with bad audio. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Wait a minute, yes. that was for that was for you guys. There were everybody else heard me okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know that? You don't know yeah. that. I don't, don't know, know that. that. <laughs> well, nobody's mentioning it here. Well, well we didn't it. mention it either. Well, yeah. well, here's, here's, a, here's a message from Mandy. Let me in, not not. <laughs> Let me in. I can't hear anything you're saying. <laughs> Or me. Okay. Brad Johnson. Brad Johnson. Gee, sorry. I never asked us to talk on Live 105. Well, uh, no, I, I didn't. Well, no, they didn't have that developed then. Uh, <laughs> yeah. to get... A technology was not, it was not there. It, uh, uh, it's supposed to get up to the mid 70s uh, later this week in the Bay Area, says Race Malone. Yes, that's true. Anyway, I should have. I, see, I can't see my messages here, so I would have seen Mandy's message. If she had written the message, I think on Zoom, I would have gotten it. 
So she had to send a she had, she had to send a text to California so I could tell the guy in New York to let her in. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's modern that technology that for you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, boy. Well, you know, uh, Rick and I, for the last couple of weeks, have always been bemoaning modern technology. And we were, you were like one of the big early adopters, right? Yeah. Well, it's like when we talk about my com new computer, I need you to come over, like, to do some things to it. Because I was doing it today, and it's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah but I, I don't know how to do it necessarily because it's a, a pc and i haven't used a pc in years but i think i remember how to do it okay well you said we could just change the drive letters or whatever yeah if you're gonna if you're gonna what what, what it is the drive is your is your brains okay <laughs> every it's your personality and if we take out the old drive and put in a, a take the take the old drive from the take old the machine, old drive and make that and, and simply put drive, it in, it I will simply start up like the old machine. Yeah. Yeah, which will be cranky. But it was funny, and I told you the producer of the Letterman YouTube channel came over yesterday and I said, Do you know how to do Windows anymore? He goes, No. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Because he's most, a Mac person. Most people in media use Macs. I mean, that's 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 the standard these days. Yeah. No, yeah. and that's why he just said, "No, I would have no idea how to do this." Yeah, uh, I, and it's too you're you're getting too old for me to get you into a Mac. Mm -hmm. No, no, I tried years ago, and I was used to the Windows. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but you're even you're even more set in your ways now. But yeah, but I want things the way it used to be. Sorry, <laughs> what he wants me to do is to literally install his old drive, which is fine. But which he is in the machine. To, it's but in there is the F drive. But he doesn't want to upgrade it to Windows 11. Let me see if I have a Windows 3.0 disk here somewhere. Maybe <laughs> I used to like Windows 3.0. <laughs> well, there I like DOS. Remember the old DOS? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Type Windows it away. Windows at one time had a had a uh, system called Windows NT. No, yeah. ME. No, no. ME. NT. Well, it was NT, NT too. Yeah. NT oh. was before ME. And they dumped NT and went to ME, which was terrible. Absolute garbage. Yeah. And then they went for another couple of garbage things. And eventually I just said, oh, hell with it. I'm going to a Mac. You know? But, you know, Windows 7 worked perfectly for me. And that's what I want back. Well, what I have in here that I'm using on this show is Windows 9, and I think you would find it okay, too. Yeah, that. but I don't, what I'd said to you, the fact that now everyone tries to charge you for the programs, where if I get my old stuff back, I'm not buying this all again. Yeah. yeah. What, what would they want you to buy? Office? Well, I told you, like today, actually, I turned the computer on. There were 18 messages from McAfee popping up telling me to buy them. Mm. Well, you can get that out of there. That you can get out of there. That's will all the will, will all the old software run on a new operating system? No, I want to go back to Windows Seven. Oh. Yeah, the problem is checking. So I have, have the hard drive from the old computer in the new computer, but it's the F drive, so you can't boot to the F drive. Yeah, but check me. Some of the software has been upgraded and won't go back. Right. Also, do you have, for instance, with Microsoft Office, do you just have the full suite and that's it? No, I have Excel, Word, probably PowerPoint, which I well, have that, never Well, that's the suite. There are about four or five things in the suite. The thing is that yours probably are the old versions, and they will continue to work, okay? But if you want to get Microsoft Office now, you have to pay yearly. Well, that's what I'm saying, and I don't want to buy it. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Len, we can't see you. Yeah, I'm Len's sorry. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it looked like you know, if I get back my Windows it kind of Seven version, looked like he was. Everything dirty. will be there the way it used to be. Yeah, and it, I'm not a power user, so I don't care. It it uh, it suspiciously looked like you were pleasuring yourself. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have I have a great picture with Bobby Slayton. 
where you can't see from the waist down. And I've got this look on my face and his hand is sort of below. And I swear to God, it looks like he's giving me a hand job. <laughs> <laughs> I got to find that picture and show it to you. Uh, anyway. And he probably was. He probably was. <laughs> So here's how I, I find out what's going on in the world. So how's everything downtown, Steve? Fine. Um, you know. speaking, speaking of pleasuring yourself below the waist, how's yeah. everything downtown? It's, uh, you know, it's great. I've been doing a lot of things and going out and hearing music and going to restaurants. And it's, um, it feels pretty good to but me. You were saying last week you've also been going to movies. Yeah, I went to a couple of movies. I just, you know, felt and there was hardly anyone there. It was great. It was, yeah. it was fun. <laughs> So West Side Story, which I didn't think I would like, and I thought was remarkably good. Oh, it is remarkably good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it, but you know, I just, I, I, uh, I just, we just have, we haven't gone to a movie yet, have we, Marjorie? No. Uh, what was that horrible movie we saw last night? Oh, we saw this movie, which they we walked out they, in the middle. They, it's been nominated for a SAG award, and the, uh, the. Uh, they say the Oscars are going to nominate it for Best Picture. Licorice Pizza. Has anybody seen really? Licorice Pizza? Uh, I want. I want to. I'm see excited it. to see it though. <laughs> I want to no, see no. You're I what? do. I mean, he's, one of, he's, he's a very good director. I've seen all his yep. other movies. Well, yeah. that's what we thought. I'm telling you, we turned it off halfway through. Halfway. It okay. just it 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 didn't go anywhere. It didn't make any sense. And if you ask me what the plot was, I'd have to say it's about a guy selling water beds. <laughs> well, I'll let you know. I'm, definitely, I'm, I'm gonna see it, so I'll let you know when I think. Meets, yeah, me meets up with Barbara Streisand's husband, who's nasty to him. I I don't understand. The movie made no sense at all. Didn't have any of the glory of Paul Thomas Anderson films, you know. Interesting. Um, like most Paul Thomas Anderson films, a bit meandering, you know. But that wasn't the problem. The problem was, we're, I'm going. What's this all about? You know, we, we, we have, have a friend bit, saying with us, so all with three the, of us voted it. Yes. Let's wow. turn it off. Yeah, I mean, there, there were three of us watching this, and huh. and the other person agreed too. What what's this all about? What are we watching this? Now for? I'm going to watch the other half of it when I can have you send, can you can you send me the link or no? <laughs> no, no you, I can't send you a link because it's a it's an account uh, screener. Okay, we go online to a special. Right, right. App to get to the screener. Oh, now yeah. I don't want to. Now I don't want to pay for it. But you know, I would it. love to let Shecky use my account, but it does have the. No, the, I don't want you to get caught doing that. Yeah. That happened to that actor whose name I can't remember. Yeah, and, and years ago, and he was precluded from ever having screeners again or something. Mine yeah. has a serial number on it. When you're watching it, there's a serial number that I use to get on. And they, they you know, if somebody records it, they'll know who it was recorded from. You know, so DVD like, screeners are a thing of the past now. On they make Netflix or somewhere three months from now. I can wait. What did you say, uh, Mike? Oh, uh, DVD screeners are a thing of the past now. They make you scream. They still send us DVDs, but you can get them online. So yeah. We watch Both, them because they don't send HD copies. Right. As screeners. Yeah. But you can see it in HD if you go to their screening site. That uh, makes sense. We watched Nightmare Alley as a screener. Oh, and yes. a week later it was on, it's not only on uh, it's on yeah. HBO Max. Yeah. HBO Max and Hulu. Hulu yeah. has it as well. Very it's good. Great. It's, yeah. I would say it's one of the best pictures of the year. Yeah, I, uh, I I watched it after you talked. It's very good. I thought I thought the original was better. It doesn't need to be an hour longer than the original movie. What was the original called? Nineteen forty-eight. Mayor Alley. Yeah. Jerome Power, John Blondell, nineteen forty-eight. Oh wow! Yeah, I've never yeah. seen it. I want to see it. Is it? Oh, I it's a great it. film. I guess. Yeah, I don't. And I. It's weird because the new one was very good, but it was almost identical. It honed very closely to the original. I don't know how they made it an hour longer than the original. Hmm. Well, it's based on a novel, if I remember correctly. So yes, probably is more of the novel in this version. There's not much so, in it that's not in the original. Probably more of the development of the characters, yeah, a little it, bit, you know, and so on. Yeah, and by the way, did you see a kid fell in the well in Morocco? <laughs> Wait a minute, what's this? Got a five-year-old. Some kid fell into a 120-foot deep well, and apparently the entire earth was watching the live stream of the rescue. I never heard about it. 
And all I kept thinking when I read about this the other day, because they pulled the kid out. Again. I know what picture you're thinking of. Yep. Uh, hmm. what, what's it called again? I'm, Ace uh, in the Hole. Ace in the Hole. <clears throat> yeah, anybody know this picture, Ace in the Hole? Sure. It was done by no. Billy Wilder, wasn't it? Billy Wilder, yeah. yeah. Kirk no. Douglas. And Kirk Douglas, and it's about a guy. Uh, a girl, not, no, a girl who falls into a well. No, I think it was a minor, wasn't it? No, it was no. a girl. It was a girl. Kathy. It was a little girl. Kathy, six yeah, little years Kathy. old, seven years old, whatever. No, well, I remember the original Kathy uh, uh, Fiscus. How do I remember that? Right. That's Kathy it. Fiscus. Kathy Fiscus. Yes. But but the, the the movie was was kind of based on that, but it was a a minor who was stuck. No, in. no, it was a child. Was it really or child? Okay. Uh, and um, uh, th this reporter is using this to make his career. And it's a but very... apparently it was a worldwide phenomenon trying to rescue this young Well, I remember boy. when I was a kid, I was about, I was maybe, I don't I know. Was 50, it was like 1949, 1950. Yeah. I, I was like I nine or 10 years old. Like and so. I remember this little girl so, fell into a well and the whole country was riveted. Literally. They had photographers there. They had everything. Yeah, I, th I think we talked about this once because it's also in the Woody Allen movie Radio Days, right? The family's yes. listening, listening yes. to the story yes. of the girl in the well. Yeah. yeah. But apparently this is a worldwide phenomenon that I never heard about. Now, did they it's... find Kathy Fiscus alive or dead? Dead. I think, I think. she was dead. She was dead? I think she was dead. And the whole country was just stunned, you know, when that happened. Uh, Mandy wouldn't remember. She's just a mere broth of a child. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember. That was... <laughs> and then I got renamed the big carnival because basically, as soon as they found the young girl dead, the carnival moved on to the next town. <laughs> so, um, so they call, they renamed the title of the film B The Big Carnival? Yeah, because Ace in the Hole, I guess, was too esoteric. Yeah. You know. Yeah, who knew what that was about? Yeah, yeah. I also, I, I went to see the new Woody Allen movie last weekend. What? With, What's it called? Rifkin's Festival. Yes, we already saw it. It was online. We did? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it's my I, thought you saw, I thought you saw Rainy Day in New York. You saw Rifkin's Festival, the one with the yes, Wallace Shawn? We, yes, we we found one with a what? copy of it a long yeah. time ago, believe yeah, it. Yeah, Wallace Shawn can't carry a movie. No. And on top of that, neither can Bobby Slayton. Did you right, see he's in it. Bobby <laughs> Slayton in it? He's in it. <laughs> He, he went, he got flown to Italy, flown to Italy, put up in a hotel for three days, wine, fed, whatever, goes in, does his part, leaves, come back to the United States. I'm in the new Woody Allen movie. I put the thing in, in about 30 seconds. five minutes, there's Woody Allen, and he's just talking to somebody as the camera goes by him. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's his part in the latest Woody Allen film. I think that's going to be about the last Woody Allen film. He's going to Paris to shoot another one. Is he okay. really? Because he's the having Paris trouble getting really money. Good. You know, he's having trouble getting money because that Mia Farrow uh, and her daughter yep. just tried well, to make his life miserable. Yeah, and he can't get, act, can't get actors either. I assume that's why Wallace Shawn's the lead of the movie because he's a yeah. friend. He yeah, he probably wanted somebody else. I thought that movie would have been much better if it was like Larry David or Jason Alexander or somebody in that role. Wasn't there a Woody Allen film in which... Uh, yeah, whatever uh, works. It would, no, Larry David. Was Larry David, movie. whatever. Yeah. What was the film? Whatever yeah. works. Whatever works, yeah. yeah. But well, not one of his bigger films. No. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was. He, he's having a hard time getting actors. And before they would line up to work with him. You know, and they they don't do that anymore. At base and, pay, and yep, it's all based are. it's all based on what I think are big or uh, false oh, absolutely. accusations. It's absolutely. based on bullshit. Yeah, yeah based on it's based Mia, on. The, Mia Farrow is one of the craziest women in right. Manhattan Island. It's based <laughs> on a sociopathic desire to destroy him. You know. Well, if she ever went sane, they'd have to close down the mental asylums in New York. City. <laughs> No, she's a, she's a piece of work. I mean, in that case. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's the kind of person that uh, I don't, I don't know what what he saw in her in the first place, but you know that. Her thing. saying was, "You took my daughter. I'm taking your daughter." Yes. Yeah. Mm. Well, look, you know, she was in twelve movies of his, and she was good in all of them. But what has she done since then? Yeah. Well, she can't be good in them because Woody isn't directing them. You uh -huh. know. 
He knew how. And to while they it. were breaking up, while they were breaking up, he was shooting a movie, and she takes him aside and says, "What time is makeup tomorrow?" Yeah, she came in for wardrobe for um, yeah, Manhattan Murder Mystery, yeah. which so he was doing. It. He was doing with that Diane Keaton. Yeah, yeah she I'll showed tell, up. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what really bothers me too is that if you took any of the films with Mia Farrow and replaced her with Diane Keaton, they probably would have been better movies. Mm. Maybe some of them, some of them. You know, I yeah. mean, I, I can't think of a picture that she carries. Alice. Alice. One of the movies of his. I Yeah, that's yeah. the movie that she carries. Yeah, for sure. I never She's very good in Broadway, Danny Rhodes. Oh, she was great in Broadway, Danny yeah, Rhodes. But I mean, it could be anybody else, too. Yes. Well, that's yeah. true, too. Any other nebbishy woman could have played that part, like yeah. Marjorie. <laughs> oh geez <laughs> you could have played very well you're not talking to me ever again right marjorie are we, getting, are we getting a divorce over this show today or the couch act tonight. yes i heard that question <laughs> you know in the if i heard that in certain cultures if you wanted a divorce all you had to say to your wife was i cast you out three times mm -hmm. i walk around in a circle yeah, yeah, and say I cast you out, I cast you out, I cast you out. So I think I could like divorce you like once a week or something. <laughs> that sounds like something from Seinfeld, like George's father would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, 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 but uh, you know, I mean, it's sad what ha what's happened to Woody. I mean, yeah. I love his films, and I even the bad ones I like to watch. Yeah. Because there's a certain element of them that still has virtuosity, you know, but then occasionally he'd make that masterpiece and you'd go, wow, he still got it. You know, Midnight in Paris was the biggest grossing film he ever had. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, by far. I think Annie Hall remains the lowest grossing Oscar winner ever. Oh, really? Lois? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And a brilliant picture, by the way. Oh, absolutely. And, I, and I'm in it. You're in, in it? it? Yeah. Where? Where are you in any hall, Shaggy? They filmed, remember when he goes to the University of Wisconsin or wherever it was? Yeah, they go to. Yeah, 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 yeah. They filmed it at NYU. Right, it's the Adelaide Stevenson rally. And they had to notice for students right. to be in the audience. So oh. I went. You went. So can, can you, you see, see can yourself you see on yourself? the street? I couldn't see myself, but I was in like row J on the aisle, left aisle. Yeah. But I mean, if I if I froze freeze framed <laughs> that scene, would I be able to say, oh, there's Shecky? Or would I just it's possible, but I I've and, never tried. Let me put it this that. way. The only person that has skin in the game here is you. Have you ever seen yourself in that film? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> well, that's, you were, you may have been out of frame. No, no. The, you see the side of the audience. By the way, I'll tell you a great out of frame story. Okay. I was working at WMCA. This was the second time around, I think. Yeah, I think it was the second time around. And uh, yeah, it was the second time around. And they decided they got everybody in town at the same time. So they were going to take a group picture of all the people on the staff. And they positioned us in different places. And there were people there like, I think, uh, I can't remember, let's see, Larry King was there because he was one of the people on, on the station. And uh, a, couple, a couple of other very big people. And uh, they position us in various parts of the photograph. And after it's taken, um, I can't remember who it was. I think maybe it was maybe it was Malky McCourt or somebody who was on one end and I was on the other end said, the reason we're there is because we're going to get fired and they can crop us out of the picture. <laughs> and within a week, we were both fired. Right. We were both fired <laughs> and they cropped us out of the picture. Oh, geez. <laughs> yep. The only two people I listened to on that station. <laughs> so whenever, whenever I've been a radio station since then, and they want to take a group picture, I always put myself towards the middle. <laughs> yeah, exactly.
because if they ever want to use that, here's our staff. I don't want to be cropped out. But now, of course, they can change faces. So, you know, it's <laughs> not worth it. Uh, hmm. So anything been happening, um, not politically, but just in the world that you like the Olympics, for instance, mm -hmm. anybody here watching the Olympics? Only your, only your wife. <laughs> I bought her Peacock for a month which is the worst, the worst uh, app there is. I mean- You said you're watching porn from- Porn? You said porn. I said Pawn Stars. <laughs> Pawn, P-A-W-N. Yeah, sure. At the worst, with your, with your bad hearing, I would have thought you thought it was about like, you know, trafe of uh, seafood. <laughs> Prawn stars, you know. That's like the punchline to thirty bad jokes. I said pawn stars, not porn stars. <laughs> exactly. No, I turned on yesterday morning and watched a little ski jumping. The announcing is so dreadful. I turned it right off. Well, they're all in yeah. Connecticut. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter where they are. Yeah. Um, in fact, they brought home one of their people. You know, they, they show, you know, the touching and tender story of some person. You know, it's like, no, I don't need to see this. Uh, is that include, Marjorie, you're watching it on Peacock where they right. have like all the things listed and you they also have NBC listed. listed. Are they running those many heartfelt stories there? Or, yeah. Oh, they are. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like they have one of their sections from Peacock is NBC. Mm hmm. Oh, did so they run all those stories. Did you see that they ostensibly found the tennis player who disappeared and she showed up? And, was and she's retiring. She's retiring because she and she hasn't been playing because of a knee injury or something like that. Because she was fucked. What? <laughs> she was assaulted. She was assaulted, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, it's not being fucked. <laughs> being no. fucked sounds a Depends little. Depends on the definition, I suppose. It sounds a, uh, in this context. Get it, probably get us demonetized, but being fucked sounds <laughs> a lot more nice than yeah. being assaulted. So you should have said she assault. Raped. She was raped. Raped. Right. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's you say fucked, different. you figure she, at least there was some fondling going on. You know. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah. But but she said that you know she she had a knee injury and she's mm -hmm. thirty five you know and that uh, because of that she's not going to play anymore and then I'm trying to figure out when did the Chinese decide to break her legs? <laughs> All I know is they they dragged her out during the Olympics because they're trying to make things look better for the Chinese and then the yeah. Chinese also who 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 lit the torch? A Uyghur. A Uyghur? Yes. They let him out of prison to do it. Her. 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 A Uyghur uh, woman co-lit it with another guy, with a guy. And they, they, lit, they lit the final flame. Uh, so, they, so then, of course, you know, she can say, hey, you know, I, I don't, uh, I, we, we aren't bad to the Uyghurs. We let them light the torch. Hmm. What is that? Hmm. Anyway, so. Um, um, uh, but you know, the best thing ever was the. Remember the triple cast, like at the '84 Olympics, maybe the '88. Yeah. Because that was like three hours of archery, straight, no <laughs> commercials, no nothing. Yeah. Wait, what is that? Well, oh, this picture's lighting up when that noise is made. So I don't know. Are you printing something, Lynn? No. Oh, okay. This this old computer is a piece. I'll I'll mute myself just in case. Okay. All right. Anyway, uh, uh, I remember the triple cast, and it was it, it was there. It, it was before you really had the internet, and you had oh, it was free screaming. internet. Yes. Then there was no streaming, so they put it on like four different channels that they had on cable. But they would run like you'd watch archery as the example. The entire archery, not a cut down version, or we'll we'll be oh, no. back later. You, you can get all the archery now, but you can also just speed ahead when you want to. If you pop, 
doing the replay, speed ahead, you know, back up, whatever. And then you can go to another sport and see that whole thing. Like we were watching curling the other day, which is my oh. favorite sport. My least favorite sport. I like it because it looks like it takes no effort at all. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you, but you have to have a broom. It, Come on. Yeah. That it, takes work. And, and the guy who initially throws the stone or starts the stone going, they go very slowly. Yeah. It's not like they, they're rushing and they got to put some power behind you. And then a bunch of people with brooms are going. And then somehow it goes to the center, knocks a bunch out. And you're going, yay. It's very, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it, I don't have to get too terribly involved. <laughs> okay. And it's a sport I think I could probably do. So, no, wait a minute. Here's Mike from Canada, the home yeah, of curling. I, I, I can I can enlighten you guys all day on curling if you want. Like oh, go I mean, ahead. there go in, ahead because we where have, I'm from, we, we have less a uh, 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 small enough audience as it is already. I think a complete sure. discussion on curling would get rid of them completely. So, like the company that I work for is a sponsor of big time curlers. Like we sponsor a gal by the name of Jennifer Jones who went to the Olympics for Canada a few years ago, blah, blah, blah. So also I've been actually actress, part- Right, Rick, Jennifer Jones? Jennifer, that, well. Yeah. <laughs> never mind. Yeah. Mary, exactly. Mary D. David sells it. Yeah. See? See? Yeah, that's so like- Shecky. That's my Shecky. At yeah. the top level of curling, it's like the bottom level of curling. And the bottom level of curling is we have all of these curling clubs all across the country, like every small town has a curling club. And the, the, the whole deal is you, you, you have a match and you go up for beers. All the curling clubs have bars up at the top on them, like with, okay. with restaurants and the whole nine yards. They're like a, like a pub. And the whole thing is that you, you curl and then you go up and drink with the other team. And it's like that at the bottom level, all the way up to the very, very top. So when you see these big national events, like the big, like the Continental Cup is the one that we sponsored. You literally would go from the arena where there's thousands of people to some convention center where they have this dance and this big party, all the coolers, all the people, curlers, all the people who watched. It's like a huge community thing. Curling's really big up here. But my, well, that's like, that's like cricket in England. Yeah. Yeah, but Mike, in the Olympics, cricket, you know. But yeah, but Mike, yeah. in the Olympics, who cares about curling? Well, the, uh, I would say the curlers do. Well, yeah. uh, <laughs> and, and I care about it, and they probably care about it in Canada, and they probably care about it in some of the Norwegian countries. You but know. seeing some of the shape of some of the athletes uh, that that make it all the way up to the Olympics, I mean, there is a point there. It is a game of skill. It's not necessarily a game of athleticism. That's for damn sure. Yeah, yeah. And even, is cricket athletic? I mean, I, I watched a cricket match once when I was in England, and I I got to the end of the cricket match, and I figured, okay, it'll be over, you know. And this was like four hours later. Never over. Okay, it's going to be continued tomorrow. I said, what? what? We go on for days. Sometimes. I'm only spending three days in England. I want to get out and do stuff. I don't want to sit here watching guys having a wicket get sticky <laughs> or something. Yeah. I would submit that cricket is more athletic than curling. By this much. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to have a bat and you have to have some guy pitching. And you the have ball to run. The bat. There's you running. Run back and forth. Yeah, yeah. You have to run. yeah but yeah. I don't think there's anybody trying to strike you out. I think you just run. Curling at its highest level has a ton of precision to it, but again, not a ton of athleticism. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you if you want, have the time. There is the greatest cricket movie ever made. Oh God, here we go again. Wait a minute, and it's, I have it. It's a great movie. It's an Indian movie called Lagan. And it also, by the way, has musical numbers, as do all Indian pictures. Okay, oh, yeah. and it is about this city, this town that's going to be taxed at an enormous rate by the British, and they made a bet with the British that they could beat them at cricket if they would uh, just lower the lagan and not charge them anything for the for the tax. And then they realized that they don't know how to play cricket, and so the whole movie is about this Indian team teaching themselves to play cricket. And as you watch it, you learn about the game. And the movie, oddly enough, is, is very good in spite of the fact it's four hours long. Uh, 
Oh, God. Sounds like it's the cool runnings of cricket now, movies. Well, it, 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 me. I tell you what it's about. You go, I have no way that I want to watch this movie. But if you ever watch it, it will suck you in and you'll watch the whole thing. I swear to you. And it's all about cricket. And I and all that I know about cricket, I learned from that movie, you know, about how it's played and the nuances and so on. Basically, it, there's a piece of wood on top of a stick. And if the object is to kind of get that to be knocked off, it's very, it's a very dull game. It's a very dull game, but four hours of a movie about it, but with great dance numbers, great songs. So there was a local wrestler that I know that used to bring a cricket bat down to the ring with him. And that was, uh, that seems to be a little bit more exciting than the cricket sport because he would actually, <laughs> the cricket bat is substantial. I don't know if you've ever seen one, but it's very thick and. Well, there was a guy in uh, Spinal Tap, the manager of, of Spinal Tap, who carries a cricket bat with him at all. Tony, Hendra, Tony Hendra. Played by Tony Hendra. The <laughs> only guy, by the way, that I ever almost got into a bar fight with because uh, he was such a miserable son of a bitch <laughs> that I was, I, I, I literally said, come on, let's go. You know, and I, I was never that kind of guy. What were you arguing about? I can't even remember anymore. Just the fact that Tony Hendra was the world's biggest asshole. So funny. You know, but he's dead now, so I won't speak ill of the dead. So he was a wonderful person. Well, you've warmed my heart. You've made me, you've, you've mentioned Spinal Tap, which has made, put me on a trajectory to going and watching Spinal Tap again, because I just need to do that every once in a while. That movie is just so delightful. Yeah. The uh, only I Christopher just... Guest movie not directed by Christopher Guest, as far as I'm concerned. Ed Bird. Ed, I want to make yeah, sure Ed's right. not frozen or dead. No, no, no. Ed, see, Ed, see, don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Continue on. You're doing great. I, mean, I, was, I was a Tony Hendra fan from the old National Lampoon. Or he wrote some really funny stuff. Oh, no, I'm not saying he wasn't a funny guy. Well, actually, the reason we hated each other is we worked on Radio Dinner together. The, right, Radio uh, Dinner. The album. And he, he, once we got into a fight on something, he cut <clears> me out of most of the album. I did a lot more on that album. I did the original Deteriorata. Wow. I still have it somewhere. In, wow. in, I didn't know that. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he, did I, that. He, did, he did the Magical Misery Tour, right? The Lennon song, yeah. which was really funny. That's what we hated. Why, why, why we hated each other. We just had a thing. You know? and we went met up at a bar one night together and it almost came to blows. Which I wish I had had because I'd like to say I've been in at least one bar fight in my life, you know. Um, but that's so unlike me, right, Shecky? You could never imagine me in a bar fight. No, I could not. Yeah, I would... Alex, you're a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> well, not according to Marjorie. Uh... <laughs> yeah, but you made you made fall off the bone ribs on Saturday night. Well, uh, they weren't pull off the bones, but they were delicious. Yeah. You know, falling off the bone is pretty much the job of the pig. You know? That was the old days, Alex. I can, only, I can only cook something in one way that is my proven way of doing it. And as good as it comes out or doesn't come out, and Charlie's agreeing with me, right? It's really dependent on the, on, on the pork you buy. Yeah. And you can't tell how the pork is till you cook it. Am I right? right uh, by the it's way, if you're good. listening to the audio on this, Charlie is just... Mm -hmm. It's always good. I, I don't think I've well, ever it, had bad ribs. Even bad. I have. Really? Did I, make, did I make you bad ribs? Well, you made some that were so chewy. You're right. It was dependent on the ribs that you got. Yeah. But, uh, you know, lately, it, 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 with the new oven, too, it's very uh, easy to do it. Uh-huh. You know, so... But does anybody have a convection oven in their oven? Any of you? Because I, I, you, Alain, you do? Yeah, yeah, I do. I rarely use it, but I do. Okay. Have. But my question is, I find that if I, it tells me to start at three, I start at 325 for about 20 minutes and I lower the heat to 225. Hmm. When I'm doing it on convection, I turn it to 225. It won't go below 300. Yeah, yeah, there has to be at a certain temperature for it to the convection. The convection to be it's going around the whole thing. And all that does is keep the cool air that wants to stay near the meat 
it pushes it out of the way yeah. and makes it cook fast. Well, I'm we also have air fryer. I cook. I cook the chicken. Way, the, the air yeah. heat I, goes I, around it. I cooked chicken one night using the convection, and you said it was terrific. You know, it was very tasty. How about the wings? The wings you made, you did that. We have an air, air fryer in it. And she did an air fry on wings, and it was really good. You know, it's great. We love our air fryer. Yeah, we, we use our like air fryer for everything. <laughs> yeah. We got one of those insulin pots, too. That thing's actually pretty good as well. What? Like a the crock pot? pot? A crock pot. It, well, it's it's a fast cooker and a slow cooker, I guess. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are great. Well, I'll say about crock pots. I, I one time I my business manager, I, I said to my business manager's wife, hey, it's his birthday coming up. What is he what would he like? He says, You know what you would like? He doesn't have a crock pot. So I went out to Macy's and I said, I want the most expensive crock pot you can sell. Hold on. Because I wasn't going to go cheap on a crock pot. I was going to get him the Cadillac of crock pots. And they said, here it is. And I said, how much is it? And they said, $30. You can't buy an expensive crock pot. And they have some now, like the ninjas and so on. And they've got all the bells and whistles and so on and so forth. But a, a crock pot is a crock pot, pretty much, you know. Yeah. I enjoy cooking stews in my crock pot. So, Rick, seen any good movies lately? Listen to this. Seen any good television lately? Listen to this. <laughs> what, you no. know? This is you, riveting. You, <laughs> no, you always tell me, like, you told me the other day, oh, I finished Abbott and Costello. Oh, and realized when I was 10 years old, I loved that TV show. At 66, <laughs> it's a pretty dumb show. <laughs> Doesn't hold up. Oh no. <laughs> but these are from the original nitrate negatives. Oh okay. so it looked great. <laughs> looked great. Looked terrific. And then you you turned me on to watching uh what was it? Oh the new the Flash Gordons on TCM saying they were good. Oh Buck no Buck Rogers. Buck Rogers. Buck Rogers yeah. And I watched it and it really was a a brilliant um uh, rest it is not a restoration, they just made it no, good it's just they got it good print yeah but now explain something to me in the beginning you have the the universal logo and then it comes on that was tacked on it was tacked on because it says real art presents now that was a that's a, the reissue company in the late 40s 50s but reissue company for universal mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay and no the it, universal logo from what i've read for this was a tack on yeah when they bci hmm. put it out yeah, so, and it wasn't there. Yeah, every, every, what? I wanna, I'm trying to check it. Do you know an Abbott and Costello movie? I love this movie when I was a kid, and I recently rediscovered it, and it really holds up. It's so different. The Time of Our Lives, great film. Yeah, great film, right? Where he's a tinker in the Revolutionary War. He's a tinker. He's yeah, a ghost. Reynolds is the, not girlfriend, but she's the other ghost. It's a really yeah. good movie. Well, what does Abbott play in that film? Abbott. He's uh, like the landowner of the yeah, estate, yeah. or yeah, that was that weird period. They didn't know what to do with them because there's another one, Little Giant. Right. They weren't a team. That's the vacuum cleaner sales, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I remember the time of their lives. Yeah, it's like, and I was surprised at how well it held oh, up. What was the name of that <laughs> film again? The the one we were talking about, Amicus Sell. Time, time of their lives. Time of their lives. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it has a great ending gag. Yeah, yeah, no, but he a, he comes back as uh, a ghost, I guess. They, they both come, he and Marjorie Reynolds come back as two ghosts who were yeah. killed by, if I remember correctly, because I haven't seen it for a while, I believe it was Bud Abbott's ancestor killed them right. in the Revolutionary okay. War. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. Yeah, but it's not like your typical Abbott and Costello. No, it's not. It's not a madcap. It's not there's, zany. There's no part. No, it's it's when they were trying to figure something else to do with them. The war it's, was it's, over. We can't have the Andrew sisters singing war songs, and you know, they don't. It, it doesn't have a, a. You know, it's a traditional Abbott and Costello movie. If there's a scene where this is my great impression, stand by for it. When when Costello sees a ghost, <laughs> and he's trying to tell Abbott that he sees a ghost, and he can't get it out, and he goes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
There's a lot of a lot of that in Meets Frankenstein. That's a yeah. great movie too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that in that early scene where they have the crypts and you know there's Bill the Ghosty and you know yeah yeah that was their biggest picture the Frankenstein movie wasn't it <clears throat> no Buck Privates Buck Privates really I think I, I hear that that um, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein was the largest grossing Abbott and Costello movie ever probably not an original issue probably in re-release etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah. Uh, I think it's a good little film. And that's the only other time Bela Lugosi played Dracula. Right. But it, it kind of made fun of them, those monsters. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I, was... That bothered me. You know, those monsters, to kids, those monsters were our favorite people. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, we really love them. We love the Frankenstein monster because he was like any kid, you know, who's trying to figure out where he fits in this world, you know, and he, he's clumsy and he, he, you know, Dracula everything. wasn't clumsy. He was no. stuck, you know, he's no, 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 but Dracula, necks. Dracula, we liked because, hey, he always got the girl. Okay. I mean, you know, I mean, he was a, he had a certain allure to him. Was that the Christopher Lee Dracula that you're talking about? No, we're talking about the. No, Bale Bale Bale. Okay. Uh, and, and Marjorie, I mean, as a woman, didn't you love vampire Dracula as a character? Because he was kind of, because Dracula, when it was originally written, was written as a gothic romance. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it was a typical gothic romance. A foreigner from another land comes and sweeps this woman off her feet, you know. Only My contention is you don't care. It doesn't matter the time or place. As long as there are vampire movies, there will be women who love the vampires. Yes. It's just a timeless rule when it comes to that. I had to buy, this goes back to college days. I had to buy my girlfriend a Dracula cake. But well, we're running over time. Becky here. into a little to, bit of role play. Wanna, Very nice. I want to Very nice. Andy and Marjorie, the two M's on the panel. I mean, <laughs> do you find uh, the the notion of vampires sexy? No. No. <laughs> well, okay. Say that again. Theory. This was, I guess, a guy's theory. I don't know. Uh, but we, <laughs> That's why we have them here to keep us honest. Yeah. Oh, good heavens. Look at the Twilight series, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, come yeah. on. That's a modern version of it. And I had two daughters. They couldn't stand it. The, and they were right at the prime of, you know, when those movies were coming out. They were like, dumb. Um, oh, really? I never about, liked it. What about yeah. Buffy? Buffy's another one. There you go. Yeah, well, Buffy had a whole different reason for existing. Right, but it had sexy vampires. Yeah, but it, was, it, it was more a tome on the empowerment of women. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I remember the original movie, and I thought it was a great idea. You know, you take the uh, the cheerleader and you turn her into a vampire slayer. You know, it's 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 a great concept. Yeah, it's a great TV show. You know, I think it's a really good very show. good TV show. Yeah. Very good TV show. Marjorie, you and I will binge watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer. How's that? Really good, <laughs> and Marjorie. It's it's really good. Yeah. Anyway, hey, I was, you know, we're running over here, and I don't care. You guys don't care. We're having a good time. You people, because we have two women here, so it's not just guys. Which is, that's one of the nice things about this. Just having Mandy there working or Marjorie sitting there in pain is just enough to keep the audience going. <laughs> Uh, uh, Edward Berg. Well, we'll get to Edward last. Oh, yeah, I'm last. He, 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 <laughs> he signs us off. Charlie Wallace, thank you. Always a pleasure having you here. My pleasure. Thank uh, Len LaFrisco, great having you around. Jeff Stein down in Florida. Uh, you're just you're in front of a fern. Uh, <laughs> it looks so Florida and ferny. Uh, Steve Bender. Boy, good to have you here. Always love having you here. Mike Chisholm, nice to know you're there up in Canada. I can explain curling to the rest of the world. <laughs> Andy O'Brien, she's in Georgia. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, great having you here again, back again, because you make out a nice part of the mix. Thanks. Rick Thanks Shetland, of course, who somebody wrote the other day was the favorite part of this show to them. No, there were uh, two people. No, no, no. Well, there were oh, no. It was Mandy and Rick. Wow, Mandy and Rick. Ooh. Yeah, well, that was yeah, one. Yeah. That was one person who wrote me, you know. And then there was the one who wrote and said they couldn't stand me. So what's the difference? Yeah, all, you know. But everybody loves Mandy, right? That's a new series on NBC next year. Everybody loves me, and uh, if nobody loves Marjorie, I do. 
I love How is that? Isn't that? Isn't that? Isn't that? I love Marjorie. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And finally, to sign us off, Edward Berger. That's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth the Goodbye, price. Goodbye, everybody. I'll see you next week. Bye. Um, Thank you, Alan.